So how does one artificially reconstruct their hair core, you ask? Well, this is roughly what hair looks like. When it gets bleached, the bleach basically puts holes in the sides of the hair, like this, so that the chemical of the bleach can get in and affect the um, pigmentation molecules inside. You might remember that these three pigmentation molecules are all made of something called melanin. What the bleach basically does is it acts first on the darkest hair molecules, so it acts first on the black hair molecules. And what it does to those is it makes them lighter, so they go one shade lighter and they go red. Next, it acts on the existing red molecules and it makes them go one shade lighter, so they go yellow. And lastly, it acts on the yellow molecules. Now they can't go any lighter, so what happens when the bleach acts on them is that they become unstable and they disintegrate. This means, because all molecules are made up of chemical elements, that basically the yellow molecules, let's make up an imaginary chemical formula for them. So let's say that's our imaginary um, formula, so that's the imaginary molecule that makes the yellow colour in the yellow melanin. When the bleach acts on it, it breaks apart these bonds, so it becomes its individual components, and then because these are much smaller than these whole molecules, these are tiny, they just come out of the shaft, and that's what happens to the yellow. If you bleach your hair again, the same thing happens, only this time your hair is lighter to start with. So, let's just get rid of that. The bleach still blasts open the shaft to get back in again. It doesn't matter that there's already holes there, it's bleach, it's not intelligent, it can't tell that. It just blasts some holes open and goes into the hair. What happens now is the red molecules go one shade lighter again instead of the yellow one. So all the ones that started out black are now yellow, all the ones that started out red went to yellow and then disintegrated, and all the ones that started out yellow are long gone. What happens if you bleach your hair more? So this is now a yellow colour. If you bleach your hair even more than this, you end up with a basically an empty straw. There's no colour left inside it and there's loads of holes in the outside. Now, because hair isn't one um, cell thick on the outside, it doesn't look like that and it doesn't just fall away. What will actually happen is it'll become a kind of jelly-like structure. And this is what happens when your hair ends up being jelly. So this is the jelly hair. Before it gets to this stage, while it's still yellow, you get some pretty good warning. So let's take this back to a state where it's not quite this bad. Because when your hair's that bad, when it's turned to jelly, all you can do is cut it off and start again. What about when your hair's in that kind of a state and it's still got a bit of yellow in it? So let's imagine there's some yellow in your hair. When you have hair like this, it's usually quite obvious that it's not in the healthiest state ever. Now sometimes it can fool you because on the outside of the hair, the only clue you've got as to what's going on in here is what's going on with this bit on the outside. This bit on the outside is called the cuticle. Now, to find out, let me just get rid of this. This bit on the outside is called the cuticle. Now, to work out what's going on on the inside of your hair, you have got no knowledge at all from the outside and all those people who say that they have repaired their hair or that their hair's in really good condition while it's blonde, all they're doing is making this outside bit shiny and strong. You can do that with things like keratin, 
and get a new colour. Keratin. Keratin adds little bits to the outside of the hair cuticle to make the whole lot a smooth flat surface. So if you put enough of these in, you'll end up with a lovely flat surface that's going to look really shiny. So it's going to look really healthy and because it's thickened it a little bit, it's also going to make it a little bit stronger. But if the inside of it is still an empty straw or a nearly empty straw, you've still got very damaged hair that you've just managed to polish. Now, this is also why keratin buildup happens actually, because if you put too much on the outside and there's not enough on the actual inside of it to... Um, to hold up that weight basically. It's like you keep adding bricks to a tunnel. At first they'll make the structure strong but after a while if they build up too much the whole thing will just collapse in so it'll just kind of break and that's how your hair can become quite brittle from using too many keratin products. To our yellow, what can you do to fix it? That's the cuticle that's the hair shaft and you've got a few yellow bits and you've got a few holes in your hair where the hair colourant has gotten in. Now obviously this is really a three-dimensional object because your hair is three-dimensional so it's not going to quite work like this. You might have like holes all over this like a Swiss cheese because you'll have your cuticle going all the way around the hair. It doesn't just go on the top and the bottom. It's all the way around the outside like it's kind of coating it, basically. This is what your hair looks like when it's been bleached a little bit too much. Now what we need to do, because it, it hasn't quite got to the stage where it's turned to jelly yet, but it's still kind of feeling a bit like chewing gum. It stretches a little bit too much when you wash it. It takes ages to dry. The only way you can fix this is to put more colour mo molecules in. Where can you get colour molecules from? Well, box dyes work by bleaching the inside of your natural hair and then putting colour molecules in. So, if we get a box dye, it has to be a permanent one, when we get a box dye, what it's going to do is it's going to add some colour molecules to the inside of your hair shaft. However, because it uses um, ammonia or peroxide, because it has to blast apart, the outside of the hair shaft to get in and remember we said that the bleach isn't intelligent it doesn't know there's already holes there you're going to end up with more holes in your hair every time you do this now what you need to do is put the red molecules back in first because remember the red ones went just before the yellow ones did and we've got the yellow ones here so the red ones the next one we need to bring back before we can bring the black ones back because if we've only got the black ones and the yellow ones we end up with a very weird color of hair and it doesn't stick the red molecules are what makes the rest of the color stay put because they are the largest of the three molecules so we've got some red in there now the problem is is that while you're doing this it's easy to think you've fixed it after the first time but sometimes these color, color molecules just kind of sit on the outside the same way they would if they were a semi-permanent and so when you've first done your hair it looks a lot redder than it's going to look a week or two down the line so it's going to wash these out and then it's going to look pretty pale because that's all you've got inside so now from this you've put some red back in you've got two options you can either keep dyeing it red and really build up those red colour molecules because they will strengthen it the most or you can go straight for the darker ones what you have to bear in mind though you're still going to build up the amount of holes on the outside of your hair shaft so what you need to do then is pick what colour you want stick to it do it a couple of times to build this back up again and then leave it alone probably looking at doing it about four times in total if your hair keeps washing out like really washing out you probably want to do this at the absolute most four times because otherwise it'll look a really nice color but the outside of your hair the condition of it will be really poor but what would happen if we bleached this again well 
because these are artificial colour molecules, because these have come from a hairline, they're not natural colour molecules that have been grown in your hair or in your scalp. So what's going to happen is that when the um, bleach goes on this, if you bleach this again, these don't go through the colour changes because they're artificial to start with. They just break apart. Their molecules just end up becoming their smaller components. And your natural ones that were left will just get bleached away because that's all there was in the first place. So while this does make your hair stronger because it puts more stuff inside it, it doesn't make it strong enough to be able to start bleaching it again in the future. And the other thing is if you bleached it there like that, bleach has got to get in. And it doesn't know about those other holes because it's really stupid. It's not an intelligent thing, it's a chemical. So it just attacks it, goes in, takes away the colour and that's what you'll be left with. So you can't really repair your hair after it's been bleached or over bleached or turned to chewing gum but what you can do is make it a convincing colour and make it look and feel a lot stronger um, both by rebuilding your core like that and then on the outside of it using keratin products but not too many of them. Why do you need to avoid semi-permanent colours if you've had very bleached hair? Now it used to be that hairdressers used to tell people to put semi-permanent colours on to stop them from damaging the hair more. Now let's have to take a look at this. So for example, we've got our hair shaft and the thing hairdressers were concerned about were all these holes. So when you put, um, when you put a permanent colour on, obviously it puts more holes in the hair shaft. So hairdressers were right in one way that putting permanent colour on will put more holes in the hair shaft, but if your hair is so bleached that um, it was a very pale yellow and then you toned it to silver or white, then what's going to happen when you put semi-permanent on is it's going to overload the outside, just like if you use keratin too many times, you'll just end up with broken hair again. It'll just keep snapping off, it'll go really brittle. Why does that happen? Wow. These colour molecules are quite large, they're larger than the keratin molecules so it's actually worse than using the keratin too many times and what's going to happen is in order to get into these what they have to do, they can't just get in them when they're like that so they have to move them like that and then they go in and then these kind of rest on them to hold them in place and after a while these colour molecules all just kind of wash off the outside of your hair so Obviously there's two problems with this, it's making your hair cuticle unnaturally stand on end so it feels and looks thicker but it's more prone to damage because there's nothing really protecting these bits which are going to be now your weakest points and these bits are all going to be prone to snapping and do you know what's going to happen if these get put under pressure when they're like this? You're going to end up with a split end. And this is one of the problems from using semi-permanent colours to try and get rid of light blonde or white hair. And that is why we only use permanent colours, because while it does put more holes in the actual hair shaft, the chemicals that we've got nowadays are much um, less harsh in order to get the same result of colour um, than they were even five years ago. And so basically it's still a better option than using semi-permanent colour because the other thing is, is that you've got nothing inside here getting back in here to actually um, help strengthen the shaft from the inside. The only thing that can do that is artificial colour. Well, I hope that's been vaguely informative. Um, let me know in the comments below if you've got any more questions about this and I'll make more videos on it um, because I think a lot of people can't visualise this um, when people do written explanations of it. I've done written explanations of it before and I'm not entirely sure that this makes sense if you haven't got all the pictures there to explain it along with. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe if you liked this video and I will see you in another episode of Science!